Good morning and welcome on this March 21st, 2021, the fifth Sunday in Lent. Here is the first reading, the gospel, and the sermon. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. O God, with steadfast love, you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with her ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was her husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks, and they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus, and Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who, lose, those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me where I am. There will be my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you're probably wondering, why did I read the first reading? You never read the first reading. Well, today's sermon will be from the first reading. So, and again, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It is really hard to improve on a good thing. But every once in a while, a product you have known and loved for a long time gets a redesign or tweak that's genius in its simplicity. Take, for instance, these two ice scrapers. Now, this one has a nice little hand warmer. And it keeps your hand nice and warm on those cold, cold mornings. But then this baby came out. Not really sure how to describe it, but you put your hand in like it's so, and it seems to scrape better. I have no idea. It must be this thing versus this thing. I don't know. Other things that has been tweaked are things like an ice cream dipper, an apple peeler, and corkscrew. And the, last, and the list goes on and on and on. New automobiles even come out 
and there seems to be something new each and every year. Like those uh, things that you can look at when you're backing out that prevents, that makes you don't have to like look behind you or use your mirrors. You can just look at that thing. Or even now automobiles have something where it parallel parks for you. Now I'm a driver's ed teacher in my other life and uh, would that make teaching driver's ed easier? I don't know. I don't know. But speaking of automobiles, we even have these roundabouts that are appearing everywhere, like the ones we now see in Hayes, America. Whenever something new and improved is introduced, like perhaps a new apple peeler or, crook or roundabout, we are always skeptical. We wonder, first of all, what it's going to cost us. We wonder if the new will really be any different than the old. We are also reluctant to change since we are quite comfortable with the things or with the way things are. This morning's reading in Jeremiah is perhaps one of the most important passages in the book of Jeremiah because it's about the new covenant. You could say that the new improved covenant and how God is going to bring that about. An earthly covenant is a legal document. A bargain struck between two parties. If you do this, I'll do this. But God's covenant with his people has always been different. It was something that God initiated and did himself. And out of that covenant, there came certain responsibilities of the children of Israel. And the Old Testament is basically a story of Israel breaking that covenant with God. Over and over and over again, they broke that covenant with God. The old covenant goes back to Mount Sinai. And if you remember, the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. It was at Mount Sinai that he not only gave the Israelites the Ten Commandments, but he also made a mutual agreement or contract with them. The old covenant. They would be his people and live in the promised land if they obeyed his commands. He had already shown great mercy and kindness to them, rescuing and protecting them. He wanted to continue to bless them. All he asked was for them to honor him as their God, holding his word and command in highest regard. But how they failed, and boy did they fail. Within 40 days, they had built the golden calf, as we read in the book of Exodus. Generation after generation, they turned away from the Lord, breaking the covenant again and again. But how merciful was he? The Lord showed them their errors of their ways and called them back time and time again. He continued to care for them and love them. Yet, because of their failures... The Old Covenant could not save them. Israel had not been able to keep the law. They never had. They never will. And they needed something new. We need something new. And what about us? We can't plead ignorance on this. The law is written in our hearts and on our conscience. We do the evil God forbids and fail to do the good that God commands. And we have no excuses. Each violation earns you and me the death sentence. If you have worshipped other gods and idols, death. If you have not loved your neighbors as yourselves, death. If you have failed to help them in need or speak well of them, death. If you have ever coveted, wish for revenge, death. And the list goes on and on. You get the picture. But there is good news. How unlike the old it is. Jeremiah proclaimed to the people of his time that the Lord would make a new covenant with them. And verse 34 says, I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sin no more. The new covenant would not be like the old one where God gave them a set of rules to live by. 
Instead, the new covenant had to deal with an eternal motivation, an internal motivation to be faithful along with the standing promise of forgiveness. Historically, they were given the law. Now, they're given the freedom to live in the grace of God. Now, when I read that, did you hear any ifs as we heard again and again from the law? Did you hear any buts? I'll forgive you, but you better shape up. And did you hear any ands? I'll forgive you, and here are the conditions. Not at all. No ifs, ands, or buts. No conditions at all, not even one. A new covenant because the Israelites did not keep the first one. What Jeremiah gives them is a new and improved way to live. This new and improved covenant, covenant of grace is all about forgiveness. For I will forgive their inequity and I will remember their sins no more. Does this sound too good to be true? Don't doubt it, for you have the Lord's word on it. In these verses alone, you see the words, saith the Lord, or said the Lord, four times. This is a solid and firm declaration of the Lord God. It has no ifs, ands, or buts. You have the Lord's word on it. Second, look at the Jesus Christ, who himself is the word, who came from the Father. He put blood on this new covenant to be into effect. The old at Mount Sinai was sealed with the blood of the animals. But this new one is sealed with the blood of God's Son. This new covenant is what Jesus made with his disciples. Think about that each time you hear the words of institution. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. And what's more, God raised Jesus from the dead as a final word in everlasting. This new covenant is sure and true. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is God's signature. For I will forgive their inequity and I will remember their sins no more. Don't doubt it. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. You have God's word on it. We don't have to wait for a prophet to tell us what to believe or wonder whether this new covenant is really for you. The old law was for the Israelites, but this new covenant is for all people, from the least to the greatest, including you and me. We personally have God's full revelation already written down, and that's what the Bible is. We don't need the authority of a prophet or a pastor or anyone else to tell you what to believe. We have the very words of God himself and the Holy Scripture. And this is one of the truths Martin Luther confessed. Rather than trusting in the authority of popes or the church councils, we are to believe the words of Scripture alone. When the emperor ordered Luther to recant, Luther replied that he could not, for his conscience was held captive by the word of God. This new covenant provides a different framework in which to live as persons of faith. It isn't about rules and policies. It's all about forgiveness. Forgiveness enables us to move forward, to bury the past, to say amen to what was, and live in the present to be the brothers and sisters in Christ who can receive forgiveness on the one hand and give forgiveness on the other. This new covenant is unlike any other. It can't be purchased or borrowed. It can't be obtained by following some set of rules and principles. It can only be received. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. You have the Lord's word on it. Then how do we receive it? How do you receive anything that is new and improved like my ice scraper? First of all, you have to accept it as a possibility. And then you have to try it. And then you have to keep using it. But I will agree, it's difficult for us to accept forgiveness. It means change. It means that we must let go of the past and embrace the present. 
It means we must truly trust in a God who forgives. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. Until we fully accept that forgiveness, we will never be able to live a new and improved existence. Now, my computer has a function called delete, and it allows you to eliminate a word, sentence, or phrase. And the way I type, I use that delete button a lot. And you can even delete an entire page, a file, or picture. And I'm sure everyone here knows what I'm talking about. When you press delete, a message appears on the screen. It says something like, are you sure you want to delete this item? And you press yes, and the item is deleted. But not really. It is simply sent to your recycle bin where it remains until you permanently delete it. But when God forgives, it is final. And it says in Jeremiah, and we sound like a broken record, God no longer remembers our sins. Going back to verse 34, for I will forgive their inequity and I will remember their sin no more. They are forgotten. They're totally deleted. Unlike God, we struggle with absolute forgiveness. Now, we forgive conditionally or remember because we don't appreciate the value of unconditional forgiveness. We leave it in our recycle bins for future reference. Brothers and sisters, to live in this new and improved covenant, we must fully accept the forgiveness that God gives and let go of the past. Forgiveness is not a temporary condition, but a permanent change. God forgives. God forgets, and God wants us to forgive with a big heart. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You have God's word on it. Thanks be to God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, personally, spring break is now over. A quick week, ready to start. Uh, ready to start the school week again. Uh, I hope everyone else that was on spring break had a great time. If you traveled, I hope uh, your travels were safe. And uh, I just want to remind everyone to keep uh, being safe and healthy. Uh, we will see you next week. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.